Please welcome Nabella Saul Pormetter. Good morning, and thanks all of you, all of you, for coming to celebrate this morning's announcement of the 2011 Nobel Prize in Physics. Uh, this is the 22nd Nobel Prize won by a Berkeley faculty member. Uh, the majority of which, 13, have been won by faculty who uh, were jointly appointed at the laboratory uh, and at the university, uh, like myself, actually, except without the Nobel Prize. <laughs> In fact, I became a chancellor as a consolation prize, but that's... <laughs> so, so let me begin by offering my, uh, our heartiest congratulations to Saul. You know, universities like Berkeley and national laboratories like Lawrence Berkeley Lab are really the only places left uh, in North America where this kind of profound work can be done, where we can pursue knowledge for its own sake. Uh, and so I can't emphasize, you know, the importance of us maintaining our commitment to being willing to put enormous energy into exploring knowledge at its most fundamental level. One of the great aspects of Saul is that, uh, of course, he's a great researcher, but all of you know he's also a great teacher. And indeed, his faculty colleagues, the Academic Senate on campus this past year, uh, recognized him as one of two distinguished faculty lecturers. And let me finish by congratulating Saul. It's uh, interesting to wake up at, what was it, quarter three in the morning um, by somebody on the phone saying that they're a reporter and they want to know how you feel. And, <laughs> and you know, I, I, I felt fine, but I... <laughs> But, but I didn't know, you know, I said, well, why? <laughs> why do you ask? And, and then, of course, uh, my, my wife, Laura, qu qu quickly uh, pulled out the iPad and, and, tr and tried to determine whether or not this was a hoax you know, or, or, or whether it's real. The idea is that back you know, in the 30s, and Hubble saw that the universe apparently is, is getting bigger all the time, all the distances between galaxies are increasing, um, it was it recognized that you might expect that that would be slowing down. Um, because all the gravity in the universe, all the stuff in the universe would attract each other, and it would slow the expansion. And so the obvious question was, well, how much is it slowing down? And is it slowing enough? Is there enough stuff in the universe that it could slow down to the point that it would come to a halt someday and perhaps turn around and collapse? In which case, we could discover that the universe was really going to come to an end. And this was uh, you know, getting towards the end of the, of, the, uh, of, of the century. And we were thinking that this would be you know, a great millennial project to be able to walk around saying you know, the universe is coming to the end and we have the data, you know, um, or, or not. And what we found when we looked at the plots um, as, as, of course, you know, is that we did not see the expected curve of the universe slowing down due to gravity. Um, it it's clearly wasn't slowing down enough to come to a halt. In fact, it wasn't slowing down at all. It apparently has been speeding up in the whole last half of the universe that we were watching. So I've been saying this is probably the, 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 the slowest aha uh <laughs> moment that you'll, that, you'll, that you'll hear about. At the time, advertised, it was going to be a very hard project when we first proposed it, that it was going to take us at least three years. Um, and of course, you know, 10 years later, um, <laughs> we actually started having results. But I don't think any of us regretted it. And I don't think that in the end, DOE or the, you know, the labs regretted it at all. And, and, that, and it's because of that long-term vision, that capability of, of providing support over more than just one little funding cycle, um, that we actually have national labs and that we have this kind of environment where you get to propose something that's a little bit bigger and, and work on something just a bit, little bit longer. Wayne Friedman with ABC7 at San Francisco. Three questions. The first one is just a simple yes or no. Did you get a perfect score on your SAT? <laughs> I've got to remember, no. No, it wasn't perfect. <laughs> well, then there's hope for a lot of people. <laughs> Probably the, the single most important thing about Nobel Prize for, for most people is whether they, they, is if you can get the parking space, um, the coveted parking space on campus. And so, <laughs> so I'll find out, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing if you can drive someplace, you know. <laughs> oh. 